Fresh from the perfect winter party to a delicious mulled wine recipe. Entertaining expert Sebastian Sentner reveals how you can melt any guest's heart this season. outdoors in winter can be magical. So Sebastian Setter shows us how it's done. Here we go. Even though it's the middle of winter, it's a great chance to get outside and throw a dinner party. I do one at least once a year. It's really, really simple, much easier than you think, and it can be really impressive for your guests. So whether it's the summer or the winter, entertaining outdoors is all about picking the right location. In this case, we've got the dining table set up right next to the fire pit, a beautiful setting for us. So in the summer, while you might be by a pool, in this case, you want to be warm and by a fire. Like any dinner party, it's all about accessorizing your table and the surrounding area. So we've got first, not only are they a great decor piece in the winter, but also they'll help keep your guests warm. We've got our hanging votives here. These are fabulous because they add a really, really nice sense of glow just around the space. We've got our little touches, so our pine cones and our centerpiece place cards that work perfectly. And then finally, we have lanterns and some backup decor that really set the tone and finish off the space well. So we centered our whole party around the fire for two reasons. The obvious one, which is it'll keep us warm and your guests will be nice and toasty. But also, I really like to take advantage of the fire and cook on it. So we've got a couple of great things going on. First of all, we've done our cedar plank salmon that's grilling over there, right on top of our fire pit. Over here, this is really interesting. What we do is we do a tagine, and this is actually a lamb shank. It's like a stew, and it's cooking on something called a Swedish, Swedish torch here. And what we've done is we've actually lit the inside of the torch, or the log, cut it open, put a little bit of stuff in there, and as that's cooking, it's actually warming and it's going to actually cook everything that we've got going on here. So while those are going on, you want your guests to have something to eat. Well, obviously, I love to start the evening. It's a special night. You're outdoors with caviar, but any just type of caviar. This is actually special Acadian caviar. It's Canadian, it's sustainable, which is one of the first in the world, and a good friend of mine, Cornell, sent this over so the guests can have something to eat. Maybe a little vodka shot or two while we wait for our food to cook. Another really fun outdoor thing to do in, this, in winter is dessert. And what we have here is we actually have maple syrup. If it's 100% maple syrup, it has to be for this to work. So what we're going to do is we bring it to a boil, and then we're going to pour it right into the snow. We'll do a couple of them here. Then you wait about 30 seconds until it starts to cool off. And as it cools off, I'm just going to take one of my sticks here, push it in like this, and roll it into a maple syrup lollipop. Perfect way to end the evening. So we impressed our guests with these fantastic food dishes in this outdoor setting, but of course, a great drink is a perfect way to end the evening. So here I have homemade shot glasses we made out of ice, of course they're not going to melt. And we've added a little bit of vodka like that. And even though it's freezing cold, it's sure to warm up your guests. Cheers. We want to say this for faux, faux, uh, faux furs. They're faux, faux furs. furs. No animals were harmed okay. in the making of this segment. And then, and then tell me about it again. You, you were cooking on that log. So you had somebody cut that log. Yeah, it's called a Swedish torch. It's actually, I learned about it just before you did the segment. It's okay. really neat. So what it is, it's a log. It's a traditional log. And right. what they did is they cut it off so it's about maybe about two feet tall. Mm -hmm. And then the people that cut it for us also put saw cuts about three quarters of the way down. So it looked like, you know, um, uh, from like Trivial Pursuit with yeah. little triangles. Yes. And then what you do is you put a little bit of fire starter and just some, uh, some like, kindling or a straw or something in it. You light it, and it actually is a self-contained fire. Wow. So you can actually put it down right there. You just put maybe a little bit of gravel under it, but also you can cook on it. So for it'll, it'll, it'll depending on the size of the log, it'll sure. go for about 45 minutes to an hour at least That's before it starts to fall apart. You can or you can actually put a grill on it, etc. Right. So it, it was a lot of fun to do. And then uh, very quickly, you're asked about the vodka cups. Come on. Okay, so those were actually shooter glasses that we made out of vodka. There's a mold you can buy online if you just sh you know Google uh, frozen shooter glasses. And we made those because <laughs> we thought you know it works well for the outside. Sure. Plus, they're not going to melt. Okay, I love that whole idea. It looked like you were cold, but you. Know Food looked delicious. Cold, but it was worth it. Okay, talk to me about what we're doing here. Mold. So we're going to make a mulled wine. And okay. the reason why this, we, we actually did it on the segment. We made a mulled wine there. But also in sort of the, the Quebec tradition, we've got the Quebec Winter Festival that's on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they make something called a caribou. And a caribou is any type of drink that has three things that are combined in it. A hard alcohol, mm -hmm. a wine, 
and sugar. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that. We're going to make our own version of it. So I'm going to get you to help me here. Okay, sure. So first of all, uh, we're going to start with a whiskey. And this is actually a whiskey that is infused with maple syrup. You mm -hmm. can use regular whiskey as well. And I'm going to get you to add a little bit of this into this jar for me. Okay. okay. So star anise. We got our star anise. Any, like two of that? Whatever you want. Okay. If, you, if you happen to like star anise, add more of that. Okay. Your orange peels. We got the nutmeg, the cinnamon. So you're going to add whatever you want to this. And then what I'm going to do... No. Yeah, go ahead. Do you like, do you like cinnamon? No. All right, well, then, then, then take the cinnamon. <laughs> Okay, no cinnamon. Why well, put the cinnamon? Okay, I don't like exactly. carrots and cinnamon. Yeah. Okay, do you, don't do you like, like cinnamon. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There we go. So a little You're bit. Just thinking me right? again, right? That's okay. selfish. Now right? what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the whiskey to that. <laughs> okay. There we cinnamon go. has to go with that. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. Okay, the, whiskey, the whiskey will overpower the cinnamon. Over. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's good. That's now good. what we're going to do is we're going to close that up, and we're actually going to leave this for two to three days, mm -hmm. and when it's ready. Jump ahead. Yep. We've actually got that same mixture that I've got here in this pot. Now, I brought it up to a steam. Whatever you do when you're making mold wine, you don't want to boil what's in the pot. You boil, it starts to take away from the alcohol. The alcohol burns. Okay. So we're going to start with this. What I'm going to quickly do is add two things. First of all, I'm going to add some sugar. Now, normally you can add brown sugar, white sugar. In this case, I'm actually using maple sugar. And it's a cube of maple sugar. And we're just going to do some shavings into there. There we go. Yes. Smells so good. So we're gonna let that melt. All right. We're gonna add a quick orange here as well, and this has got cloves in it, so it's an orange. Does it have cloves. to have cloves? It doesn't have to. Okay. I just sort of like to add that flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, as that simmers, we're gonna add our red wine. Okay. Is there a type of red wine you like? No. You know what? You don't want to do anything too strong or anything too good for that matter, because it's gonna get overpowered with but the wine. But make sure you like the wine. Don't put stuff that you don't like in there because you have to drink it. Yeah. Exactly. So usually I would find that's you know a lighter wine. Try and use a Canadian wine. I'm yeah. a big fan of using Canadian wines. And actually, as that warms up and steams, what you can do is you keep it on a simmer so it's nice and warm, but again, it doesn't boil. And then you can serve it, when it's hot, straight into the cups. Here we go. Here we go. It's not quite warm enough. Let's wait for it to I warm know. for a sec. Okay, but they got the recipe, and that's what matters. There we go. We just put a little bit in there. All right. All right, try not to spill this too much. There you go. One and, for you, you. and then what do you do? Do you kind of put a little design on it or You something? can, but you know what? Right now, it's very spiced, okay. so you All may right. not want to add too much more to it. All right. Watch that it doesn't spill on your beautiful white top. And cheers. Cheers. Happy winter. Happy winter. Thanks, Sebastian. Mm. Thank Thank you. You. That's really good. Yeah.